Joining separate wall objects can happen in a number of phases. Uh, the majority of them happen when you're actually just drawing the wall with the wall tool itself. So for instance, if I go to the wall tool and I start drawing out some walls and they're just chained together, these walls are already joined. They're already joined right here in corner joints. I don't have to worry about that at all. If I were to draw a wall like this, finish my wall drawing, and then draw another piece of wall that ends on top of this. Do you see this red highlighting? If I end on top of that, that wall will also automatically join. If I draw across walls and don't end them, see the red highlighting, and now it's gone. Red highlighting, and now it's gone. If I draw across walls like this, I cannot join these walls with the wall join with the regular wall tool. I need to use what's called wall join. Now there's a number of different modes that the wall join tool has. Uh, but actually first, there's something I do want to mention. This is on by default, this automatic wall joining. So when I go to draw walls against each other, that's on by default. If you don't want that to happen, you can go here and it will auto join walls from the preference menu and turn this off. So when I go to draw walls now, they will not attempt to join at the ends. They will simply draw exactly on top of each other the way you had them before. Now, when you have existing conditions where you want to change them, these are the three most common. This is what would be an L join, an X, and a T. Now the wall join tool is what will do all of these, but you need to have it set to the right mode. So here, we use L join mode, and if we hover over, you'll see we get that same red highlighting. To use the wall join tool, simply click on one wall, and then click on the other, and it will join them in the expected manner. Currently we have capless joining turned on, so if we undid that operation, and we joined with caps, click on each of these walls, you can see it would butt the wall against the other one. So the wall that I drew first butts against the wall that I clicked on last. So if I undo that and do that again, clicking this wall first, then this one, the wall I clicked first will be butted up against the wall I clicked on second. And if I don't want that at all, I would simply click on these two with this mode and it will not use capped joins. That's what the second set of options does. Now if I try to use L join, on these two, it's going to break and basically ruin the walls that I already had drawn because I told it I wanted an L and you cannot make an L with four bits. So if I want to join this as an X join, then I would click my two intersecting walls and they'll be joined smoothly. If I want to join a T join, I would click first on the wall that's going to intersect the other wall. Click on this wall first, then this one, and I'll get my nice clean T join. Now if I undo those two, and I do these as capped. If I join this wall to this wall, what I've done is broken this into three separate wall objects. So once you do that capped join for an X in particular, you've broken this into three separate wall objects, not two anymore. So if I try to go back and join these anymore with X join, I'm going to get an error because it's two separate walls. I would first have to make sure that this was just two wall segments before I'd be able to join it again. It doesn't happen very often, but make sure to keep that in mind whenever you go to use wall joins. Now, these walls are all particularly simple. These are all simple, generic, I believe the style is, yeah, these are interior bearing walls. So these are not complicated. They don't have multiple components. In the next video, we're going to cover the joining of the components, which is a little more complicated, but uses a similar tool.